beginning at verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, son of Bera, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go take to yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness, because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery in departing from the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblium. Sorry, I'm in, I'm in chapter 1, I beg your pardon. Chapter 2, verse 1. Say of your brothers, my people, and of your sisters, my loved one. Rebuke your mother, rebuke her, for she is not my wife, and I am not her husband. Let her remove the adulterous look from her face, and the unfaithfulness from between her breasts. Otherwise I will strip her naked and make her as bare as on the day she was born. I will make her like a desert, turn her into a parched land and slay her with, love, with thirst. I will not show my love to her children because they are the children of adultery. Their mother has been unfaithful and has conceived them in disgrace. She said, I will go after my lovers who give me my food and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. Therefore I will block her path with thorn bushes. I will wall her in so that she cannot find her way. She will chase after her lovers but not catch them. She will look for them but not find them. Then she will say, I will go back to my husband as at first. For then I was better off than now. She has not acknowledged that I was the one who gave her the grain, the new wine and oil, who lavished on her the silver and gold which they used for bail. Therefore I will take away my grain when it ripens and my new wine when it is ready. I will take back my wool and my linen intended to cover her nakedness. So now I will expose her lewdness before the eyes of her lovers. No one will take her out of my hands. I will stop all her celebrations, her yearly festivals, her new moons, her Sabbath days, all her appointed feasts. I will ruin her vines and her fig trees, which she said were her pay from her lovers. I will make them like a thicket. And wild animals, will devour them. I will punish her for the days she burned incense to the bales. She decked herself with rings and jewelry. I went after her lovers, but me, she forgot, declares the Lord. Therefore I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into the desert and speak tender, tenderly to her. There I will give her back her vineyards. I will make the valley of acorn, a hope, a door of hope. There she will sing as in the days of her youth, as in the day she came up out of Egypt. In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no, no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the bales from her lips. No longer will their names be in hope. In that day, I will make a covenant for them, with the beasts of the field, and the birds of the air, and the creatures that move along the ground, by bow and sword and battle, I will abolish from the land, so that all may lie down in safety. I will betroth you for me to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. In that day I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond, respond to the skies, and they will respond to the earth. And the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and oil, 
and they will respond to Jezreel. I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I call not my loved one. I will say to those called not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. The Lord said to me, go show your love to your wife again. Though she is loved by another and is an adulteress, Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites. Though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisins, raisin cakes. So I bought her for 50, 15 shekels of silver and about a homer and a lethic of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man. And I will live with you. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or idol. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your precious word. Teach us through these chapters this morning. Bless our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Hosea is the prophet who spoke of the punishment and exile which awaited Israel in not too distant future. And a little later on, the same for Judah because of their unfaithfulness. And as we, as we see, this book is a picture played out in the life and relationship between Hosea and his wife, Gomer. As it were, an allegory of the relationship between God and his people, Israel and Judah. And as we look at chapters 2 and 3, we will see three things about this relationship and how God deals or will deal with it. Continually unfaithful Israel. Fervently devoted God. Lovingly reconciled to God and by God. So first of all, continually unfaithful Israel. The picture shows us God calling on his children who are still faithful to him to call on to call on and stir up the people of the whole nation to return, to come back to the Lord. He calls on them to rebuke their mother, the whole body of the people of Israel to come back to the Lord, their first love. From all of our false idols since its inception, the nation of Israel, whom God brought out of the land of slavery, Egypt, not only grumbled against God, but when he furnished them with the law to abide by, and with a wonderful land, they, their children, and their children's children, forgot God. They turned away from him to worship false gods. They became an adulterous nation. Adulterous nation. In those days, the punishment for an adulterous wife was to strip her, send her away from her home and family, shamed and naked. Destitute. Destitute. No matter what God did for them, they turned their back on him. This relationship had completely broken down because of Israel's generations, continuous, continual adulterous behavior of running after false idols, which were no gods. 
They forsook the one who loved them, provided for them, and protected them. What was the excuse? It is said in the ancient writings of the Chalde that the nations Israel had alliance with and courted ascribed the gifts coming from these nations' gods. Such as Sirius, the so-called goddess of corn, and Bacchus, the goddess, the god of wine. This coming from commentator Matthew Henry. We see right throughout parts of the Old Testament Israel continually bowing down to false idols and forgetting the God who loved, who loved them. As we see in, in 1 Kings, God stopped the rain. He stopped the rain in 1 Kings chapter 17. God stopped the rain. Uh, Elijah went to Ahab and said there will be no rain. This was prophesied. This was prophesied in Deuteronomy. We'll just read it. Chapter 28, verses in verse 22. Deuteronomy 28, verse 22 says, The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. This is what God said would happen. And many more things would happen if they turned away from God. And at that time around, uh, the Deuteronomy time, there was one mountain that said the blessings of God, and the other mountain said the, uh, the curses of God. And these were the curses of God. And this is what was going to happen to the people of Israel. God shows Israel what will happen if she persisted in her adulterous ways and actions? They would be taken from the beautiful land that God gave them and brought into captivity and slavery to a foreign land ruled by their enemies. The nation had come from nothing in Egypt, wandered in a parched desert wilderness for 40 years and was going to be like that once again because of her sin against God. Because of her sin against God. Have we turned away from our sin? Or are we continually going back to the same old temptations of our own life? Are we doing that? Are we doing like, that, like, like Israel and like Judah and going back and with all the temptations and, and, and falling to all of these temptations? Seek the strength of the Lord when the devil tempts us. Not in our own strength, but in God's strength as as. As the book of James says, as James tells us in chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He doesn't say, resist the devil in your strength, in my strength. He says, submit to God. Then with the strength of the Lord, Resist the devil. Don't resist the devil in your strength or my strength. Resist him in the strength of, of the Lord. Resist him in his strength. Because that's all that we have. We hope and pray that we look to God and his love and not fall continually the way Israel turned away from their loving Secondly, fervently devoted God. We can see from these verses a heartbroken God. How do you know that he's heartbroken? 
How do you know? Well, Ezekiel tells us. Ezekiel tells us in, in uh, chapter 6 and verse 9, he says this. I will read it from another verse as well, or another portion of scripture as well. But uh, He says in, in verse 9, Then in the nations where they have been carried captive, those who escape will remember me, how I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts, which have turned away from me. And the ESV says, in the same verse, it says in verse 9, Then those who of you who escape will remember me among the nations, where they are carried captive, how I have been broken over their whoring heart that has departed from me. Very strong words. Very, very strong words. God is grieved because of the sinfulness of Israel. God is broken. Broken. His heart is broken because they have fallen away. see a broken heart in God who has done everything for Israel. How he brought his friend Abraham from Ur of the Chaldees into the promised land, gave him a son in his old age, all of his descendants, Isaac, Jacob and the family and all that they needed. Then provided a land for them in Egypt where they grew in number. They grew in number and became a great nation, Israel. A great nation. What devotion to a people whom he loved. Even when they turned away from him, he <coughs> still loved them. He loved them so much that he brought, brought them back. He saw their suffering. Their suffering. He provided and protected for them in the wilderness. And through all the trials and difficulties. When they were invaded by Midianites. By Philistines. And others. When they turned away from and worshipped idols. Yet he provided for them. He gave them guides like Moses. Joshua. Judges. And God gave them to rescue, rescue them from those invading nations. He gave them many guides like Gideon and many others. Priests like Samuel to teach them to walk the in the true ways of the Lord. Prophets like Elijah and Elisha who turned them back to the Lord and showed them clearly who was the one true and almighty God. God was ever loving. He is ever loving to us. He wants to allure Israel back to him into that loving husband and wife relationship which he continually broke. To bow down to false idols. He wanted that relationship of a husband and wife, not as the priests of the false idols and their rulers who treated many people, who treated many countries, many peoples. They ruled the people in great fear. If the people did not do what the priests and the rulers said, the terrible things would happen to them. To their families and to their country. God wants that loving relationship restored. As we see in verses 19 and 20, I will betroth you. Betroth you. And that, that's that's a, 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 a strong, as it were, married. <laughs> Joseph was betrothed to Mary. It was as strong as marriage. That's why he wanted to divorce her. 
but he was betrothed. And God says, I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. What love. What love we see in this broken hearted God who reaches out who reaches out to the people to bring them back to bring them back we have a fervently devoted God who loves us and cares for us he wants that relationship with us that will last forever and if we're trusting in the Lord, it will last forever. Yes, we will fall and sin. Be tempted by all our old temptations. And those in the world around us today, and there are many. Many. But this loving God will forgive us when we come in repentance. He is for us today and forever. He will be a totally and fervently devoted God in all of our lives. Israel, continually unfaithful. We have a fervently devoted God and finally lovingly reconciled to God. Hosea loves his wife even though she is an adulteress and is living with another man. Now before we look at this wonderful picture in the first three verses of this third chapter, I want to look at the final two verses. The nation Israel would be without everything they had been used to in their own country. In captivity, they would have no king, no prince, no sacrifices, no ephod, the high priest, calling on God and bringing the petitions of people to God and God's word to the people. There's none of that. then God will have compassion and pity on them when they seek the Lord and return to their own land with one leader trembling but blessed in the last days now back to Hosea and Gomer what a picture of love and thank you Tim for all the, the, the great uh, hymns of love and mercy what a picture of love and mercy. God, Gomer has caused all sorts of problems for Hosea, for the family, by being unfaithful and living apart from a loving home. Now Hosea, the loving husband, has to buy her back. What a shame on the family. He has to buy her her back. She could not get out of this situation by herself. Not able to get out of it at all. No way out. No way for her to be able to pay her way out. She could only be bought at a price. She was Hosea's wife. She was his wife. God told her to take her as his wife, she was his wife. But now what has happened? He has to buy her back. Buy her back. I don't usually do a children's talk in the middle of my sermon. But I'm going to do one today. And I've done this in a number of places. As a young boy, the young boy, he loved doing a bit of carpentry. 
And he built himself a boat there, no mass or anything on this boat, but you can picture, uh, we're all talking about pictures this morning, picture a boat. This young lad lovingly built this boat. And he took it down to the river many, many days. And he saw it sailing around and, and uh, on the river and, and so on. And, and he did it all the time. He made the boat. But one day, unfortunately, it slipped out of its grasp and drifted away. And he lost it. He lost the boat. Then one day, as he was walking in the town, he looked in a, in a shop window and he saw his boat. He saw his boat. And he went into the man in the shop and he said, that's my boat. That's my boat. I'm going to take my boat. Oh, no, you're not. No, you're not. Someone sold me that boat. And if you want to buy it, you have to buy it. If you want that boat, you have to buy it. So he saved and he saved and he saved. And then he went in and he bought his boat. His boat. He brought it home and he clung onto it. He said, now you are mine twice. I made you. Now I have bought you. I made you. Now I have bought you. What a picture. What a picture. Jesus paid the price. God made us. God made us. We drifted away. We were unfaithful. We, 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 we were lost. Jesus paid the price. He gave up his life. Maybe there are some who haven't been bought this morning. Are you still just made by God and not bought with a price? Christ of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only did he die a cruel death upon the cross, but he took your sins and my sins on his body on that cross. Jesus went through the shame of a public trial, accused of blasphemy, though innocent, and declared it three times by Pilate. Looking a wee bit like this on this morning on the radio was severely beaten, mocked in all sorts of ways. All for you and for me. Do we think of it? Do we think of it? Do we think of Jesus paying price for us? For me, I don't think of it often enough. To my shame. To my shame. The Lord Jesus lovingly reconciled us to God. He lovingly reconciled us to God. And as I finish, as I finish, he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to take my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, the whole day long, for Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Our Father, we thank you that even though we are a, a people who sin, Yet you sent Jesus. We are a lost people. But you sent one 
to buy us back, to redeem us, and to save us from the penalty and the curse of death, an eternal separation from you. Thank you. Thank you that Jesus died, died for sinners, died for me. Thank you. Bless us throughout this week. We pray in Jesus' name.